What's up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another daily vlog and guys we're working on the file knife. Now what I want to focus on today is getting the acid etch done and we're either going to just leave it dark or we're going to stonewash it or I'm going to sand the bevels and just leave the file lines dark but it's really going to depend on how it etches. Now I've got a good process for how I etch the knives and I'll talk about that either during the etching or after the etching uh, but I really want to focus on getting that etch done perfect because like I said that's really gonna you know the design is gonna be based off of how I do that moving forward so I'm excited to see what it looks like hopefully it's a nice just black black uh, that's what I'm going for I, I want that and if it comes out super black we're leaving it black but uh, we'll see how it goes and guys, if we have time, we're going to put the handle scales on. I don't know if we're going to tonight. I've got a, something that might be coming up tonight. Don't know yet, but no matter what, we're getting some etching done. And I'm going to give you all some awesome tips and tricks on what you need to do when it comes to etching and then the process after that. So let's jump into it. Let's get it knocked out. All right. So before we actually do the acid etch process, we want to get the desired finish on the knife and we are using a medium scotch bright belt to actually do that and I'm just going over the whole entire knife getting that finish on every edge side spine everything so that we get a real uniform acid edge now the acid mixture that I'm using is 50% ferric chloric acid and 50% distilled water and I did warm this up a little bit just past room temperature because it etches way better that way now I tried a bunch of different ways to get this to go in here and the knife is basically just too long <laughs> so I thought about it and I figured okay let's go ahead and take the thing out because it really isn't doing anything it's not holding the knife up um, now I decided to go ahead, put the lid back on it, and then lay the whole container on its side and it would submerge the knife. You know, sometimes you have to be crafty whenever you're doing things like this. Now once we've got it soaked for the first 20 minute soaking, we want to pull it out and start inspecting it, looking at the finish, seeing if we're getting any weird discolored areas. And we're just gonna use our gloves to scrub it. You don't need to use steel wool at this point or anything like that. We're just going over the whole entire blade and checking for those slight discolorations. But from what it's looking like, this is going to etch very well. There's nothing really that stands out to me. So we're going to just go over the whole entire knife, give it a good scrubbing with the gloves, and then we're going to grab some paper towel and just kind of dry some of the acid off of the knife. And then really look at the finish. Make sure we're good because what we're going to end up doing is putting this back in the acid for a second 20 minute soaking. And this is going to really darken the blade. So the first one gets off any impurities and any just stuff that's left on the blade. The second one is just going to darken it. And then we go back on the side again. like I said, for another 20 minutes. Now I am absolutely happy with how dark this came out. Whenever you first look at it, it kind of has a brownish look to it. That's really just the acid. When you start scrubbing some of this off, you start seeing how black the finish is. We're gonna talk about this when we do our outro. 
All right, guys. So let's go ahead and actually wrap up today's daily vlog right here for two reasons. For one, I want to actually talk about acid etching in detail for a second. Two, I had to actually stop in the middle of this video and I went and talked to a few people that I'm going to be doing a collab with. Now, this is going to be pretty cool because it's a local podcast that we have going on here in the city that I live in. Uh, they're awesome podcast. They do a bunch of funny stuff. And um, they're actually going to come in. I'm going to show them how to make a knife. We're going to make a knife, do a few different days of that. So that's going to be something that's going to happen probably at the beginning of June. Uh, so I had to stop, go over there, sit down, have a full discussion with them and everything like that. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about doing that. I think that it's going to be cool for y'all because y'all actually get to see me teach somebody how to make a knife. And uh, it's not just one person. I'm going to be teaching three people. They're going to do different parts of the same knife. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I'm excited about that and hopefully, hopefully that's going to get y'all excited too. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to talk about in this, because I could have done the acid etch in this, just made it a small part of the video, and then spent a ton of time cutting down the handle scales, uh, getting them epoxied up, all that stuff. But I get questions all the time on one subject, and that is, how do I get a good smooth finish when acid etching, and <laughs> I acid etched my knife and now it's rusted, what do I do? Okay, so for one, look at how dark that etch is. This is one of the things that I love about acid etching files. It gets black. And I mean, that is a very smooth finish. And everybody will tell you, man, it's all about how you sand it. You got you to gotta get it up to that 2,000 grit sand and then acid etch it. Let me tell you all something, okay? For one, I did a 40 grit, a 120 grit, and then a medium scotch bright belt. That's all I did. I didn't do 400 grit, 600 grit, 800 grit, 1500 grit, then 2000 grit, then acid etch. Didn't do any of that. All I did was two belts and a scotch brat belt. So, what I want to tell y'all is how I get such a smooth finish. A couple of things. It might even be three. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, for one, it's all about your heat treat. You don't heat treat your knife well, it won't get a smooth finish. If you do a great heat treat on your knife, you will get a smooth finish like this. So focus on your heat treat, and then next, do make sure that you do have a really good finish on it because that's the reason why I go with the scotch Bright belts. It's the reason why I do specific steps leading up to the acid etch, like uh, get to the finish that I want before heat treat, then I heat treat, and then I spend the time to clean the blade and clean everything well before I go into temper. And then when we get done tempering, we go through and we go back, get a good finish on it again. Again, all we ended with was the scotch Bright belt. So get a good finish on it, and then do your acid etch. Mine is a ferrochloric and distilled water 50-50 mixture of the two. I'll have a link in the description for the ferrochloric that I order. It's actually from, <laughs> of all places, Radio Shack. So evidently, all of the brick and mortars are closed. It's just all online, but you can order it off there. I'll have that link, like I said, in the description. It's a 50-50 blend of distilled water and ferrochloric acid. Uh, I do a 15 to 20 minute soak in it pull it out, clean it, and I typically only clean it with like my gloves and simple things like that. Uh, clean it, dry it, put it back in, pull it out after 15 to 20 minutes. If you need to go back in again, one more soak in it, and you will get a nice finish on your knife. You just want to make sure you clean because the acid will actually eat away some of the impurities on the outside of the, st of the steel on the first bath. Second bath, you're going to get a real smooth finish. This is just two soaks at 20 minutes. That finish. But what do you do after you acid etch? That's the question. That's the question every single time. What do you do? How do I not get 
rust on this thing because I acid etched it and now it's just brown. So what do I do? Mineral oil. You can do WD-40 if you want. I'll typically take, if I'm going to stone wash it, you see me spray it. I spray the WD-40 into the little stone wash solution and then I shake it and get everything good and that will coat the blade and keep the blade from rusting while it's doing that and then I'll take the time and I'll clean the blade and then I'll do mineral oil and this is a real simple setup take some mineral oil a little paper towel and all we're gonna do is just coat the blade Now, word of advice for this, okay? All we're going to do is just make sure it's coated. Uh, whenever it comes time to putting on the handle scales, you're going to want to clean your handle tang. Clean that very well so there's no mineral oil in between the handle tang and your uh, scales whenever you go to glue up because it will mess that process up. This right here is just so that we do not rust while we let it set overnight. So just a decent little coat right there. Reason why I use mineral oil is because it is food safe. So if I ever decide that I want to cut something with this and eat with it, I'm using food safe oils while I'm doing it. But a mineral oil, a WD-40, gun oil, frog oil, there's a bunch of different oils. You want to apply that pretty much directly after drying it once you got it out of your of your uh, acid etch and that way you don't have to worry about a rusty knife when you get up in the morning guys that's the end of this one you know what hopefully this helped y'all out because enough of y'all asked me this question and if it did give this video a thumbs up share this video or a video i've done in the past that might be your favorite and guys if you haven't yet come on now bottom corner hit that subscribe button y'all have an amazing day y'all stay safe out there i hope y'all enjoyed this you know what i'll see y'all tomorrow let's put some handle scales on this thing